Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the session. Is everybody having a good Google Cloud Next so far? I know it's the afternoon, but that's a little, we're going to bring it up because we're about to show some really awesome things. Thank you so much for joining us today. We've got a great program uh, showing you the latest in BI and how we're applying AI. We have assembled a great crew of experts today. I have fellow Googlers from the product team, including Kate Wright and Peter Bayless, uh, and very, very special guests uh, from L'Oreal, one of the most iconic personal care brands in the world that's doing some amazing things with beauty tech. I can't wait uh, to for let you hear their story. All right, here's a quick snapshot of our agenda today. Uh, so you know what to expect. I'm going to do a little bit of a preamble as your humble narrator. And then I've got some really cool live demos that are all going to go extremely well today um, that I'm really excited to share with everybody. So let's kick it off. Um, if we had to really explain, like, what is the big vision that we have for BI here at Google Cloud? Um, it's all about that leveraging data is a balance. It's a human scale balance as much as it is a technology balance. It, it requires technical teams to have tools in order to be productive. And it also requires tools that need business people to be more self-reliant. The underpinning of this is what makes actually Looker really special, which is SaaS, really self-explanatory for all the brilliant people in the audience here. Uh, we have made a big move last year by bringing Looker into the GCP console with Looker Core to make it easier to deploy and manage, deeply integrate into your full stack to take advantage of the limitless capabilities GCP has to offer. The semantic model, being able to offer governed metrics everywhere, that's moving in every conversation that I've had with customers, big, small, and beyond. Uh, the semantic model conversation, especially in the era of Gen AI, is moving from a nice to have to a must-have conversation, super important. And then finally, when you think about the adoption, one of the reasons that it's so hard to get people to use BI is that everybody has their own working style. And so this idea of composability with the platform is very important. How do you have the APIs and extensibility to be able to build your own custom data experiences so you can meet these many modes and many styles of BI that your users demand? And doing all this on a unified AI platform. If you caught some of the keynote, you've seen some of the incredible work that's going with Vertex and BigQuery uh, really becoming the crown jewel of the Google Cloud portfolio as well. And Looker being able to be extended within it and integrated with APIs so you can take advantage of the governance, security, so the LLMs function seamlessly um, and also keeping the protection of your customer data uh, at the forefront. We think about what makes Looker different. Um, it's really four big things. At the nucleus, it's the semantic model, the governed data that's going to ensure that you get correct answers, but also that your data team remains in control as you expand your self-service. Number two, foundational AI. This is unique to Google with Gemini, uh, but also with the work of Vertex AI, we're also being able to offer that optionality for you to bring your own LLM and tune it by combining different GCP services. Google Easy Dashboarding. My colleague Kate is going to tell you about a big, bold vision we have to bring the best of Looker Studio uh, to Looker for what I call Google Easy Dashboarding. So for how do we bring that workspace-style familiarity of drag and drop, intuitive, very easy to onboarding uh, to your BI and dashboarding needs? Um, and finally, I talked about the extensibility um, and how you can actually take that, embed it, monetize your data, and beyond. So let's talk about the semantic model. Every single time the customer talks to me about AI, I want to talk about governance. Because what I really want to ensure is that how do we ensure that you trust the data, that your data team remains in control? A semantic model is also a social construct. It requires data teams to be pulling requirements from the business, because we agree upon the model. And then we can scale that out for consistency. And what's different about the approach with Looker is that we really remain true to our tenant of openness and an open platform which means that we're allowing you to consume our semantic model, which is purpose-built data modeling with LookML, in the BI tools you might use today, as well as some of the consumption tools that you might think about for tomorrow. So we want to eliminate the ability for your business to accumulate tech debt and make sure that you're moving forward as you innovate on data and analytics. And how do you move fast in a market? How do you gain more fine-grained control over the data experience? 
This is where Looker offers a huge differentiation in the flexibility of our APIs to build some incredible experiences, whether it's looking at what UiPath has built or Drizzly or some of our great partners and customers. Um, it doesn't look like Looker, and that's OK, because it should look like it belongs in your brand. It looks like you can build analytics as a premium offering, and then when you add AI, this becomes a differentiation for your business uh, to be able to compete in the market. So the full composability of the Looker platform really gives you that. All right. So when we think about our roadmap, product vision, and strategy, it's really three pillars. It starts with a complete BI suite. Um, my colleague Kate is going to talk about how we're delivering this unified product vision, bringing the best of Studio and Looker together. It's about a trusted and open platform. I touched on some of this with the importance of the universal semantic model. And of course, everybody's favorite word here at Google Cloud, which is AI, and infused with intelligence. How do we offer you helpful data agents that allow you to speed up uh, different tasks and workflows that hamper analytics workflows, whether it's creating modeling code with LookML or configuring a visualization and chart? How do we make that and give you time back and help you spend that more efficiently? So with that, I'll be back in just a few for a couple of live demos to bring some of this to life. Uh, but I'd like to hand it over to my colleague, Kate Wright, our leader of product, uh, to talk a little bit more about our unified vision. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sean. It is so lovely to be here to be able to share with you the innovations that we are bringing to Looker in 2024. Now, Looker is here, and it can meet all your BI needs today. We want to make sure your business feels empowered to do the kind of analysis they need, which is why we have dashboards, we have reports, and we have our magical exploration experience, not to mention connected sheets and the ability to access Looker's semantic model from the tool of your choice. But we also have a rich set of advanced developer tools. Like Sean talked about, we want to make sure that you can put the insights where you need them to be with beautiful data experiences, infused with AI, of course and our governed enterprise-grade cloud-first semantic model. Now, I'm also going to tell you a little bit about AI and Gemini and Looker today, but you have to sit tight. We're going to start with our unified Looker experience. Now, part of how we have such a complete BI offering is that we've bought, brought together these two incredible BI tools, Looker and Looker Studio. Together, we have more than 10 million monthly active users of our product. And a lot of that has been driven by how easy to use Looker Studio is with its awesome visualization and its rich set of data sources, more than 800 at last count. And of course, Looker is also here for your resilient enterprise use cases with its semantic model and its rich set of APIs for your embedded analytics needs. But while we've brought them together into the same family, we've heard from you very clearly that we haven't gone far enough. And that's why I'm happy to tell you more about our unified Looker experience. We are bringing these together into one product, one experience for your users to analyze and find the data they need, one set of capabilities for you to administer and manage, and one commercial model. We're doing so much in 2024 starting with this unified experience. As part of this, this means there'll be one place for your Looker users to find the information they need, their dashboards, their reports, one content management system to browse and to search. And of course, this also means that you'll have one way to manage users and easy, seamless navigation for those users to use Looker. And as part of, the, as part of this, this also means new value for your Looker users. As part of their experience, they'll be able to use our awesome visualization as part of Studio Dashboarding, connecting not only to the LookML model, to our semantic model, but also to our rich set of over 800 data sources. And we do have more connectors coming this year as well. This also means that we're investing in seamless navigation between the best of both products. So you'll be able to go from a curated Studio Dashboard with rich visualization to being able to ask further questions with our magical Explore experience. And not only that, but we're investing more in our visualization and our core usability of our product in 2024. So the product's gonna get easier to use. We're gonna make it really easy to configure charts and layout reports. 
And as part of this, we're also gonna invest in a responsive layout because we've heard how important it is that you really can curate the experience on different devices. And it also really matters how our consumers actually can use the data that they get in these dashboards and these reports. And so we're adding additional capabilities for them to be able to interact with our dashboards, regardless of device. And lastly, we are also investing in more visualization capabilities and more chart types. We have a lot coming in 2024. But before I hand it over to Sean to show you what that looks like, there's one more thing I have to talk about. And that is that as we are unifying these products together, we recognize that you're going on this journey with us. And so today, I'm very happy to tell you that as part of your existing Looker user licenses, you will now be entitled to a Looker Studio Pro user license as well. Come on, thank you. So this means that for every internal business intelligence user that's licensed for Looker, you will get the access to the equivalent Looker Studio Pro license. Now this will be an opt-in capability so you can control how you're rolling this out in your organization. And it also gives you the chance to decide how you're using Studio dashboards and get really excited about all the things coming to Looker soon. And I will tell you that this is going to be available for you today. With that, I'm gonna hand it over to Sean to show you what this is all gonna look like. Awesome. All right, really excited to take you on a journey about where we're thinking about really bringing the next level of user experience into Looker. A lot of our customers have talked about what simplification, make it easy. Well, part of that starts with your content management. So give me one place that I can get all of my dashboard studios and reports as well as my traditional Looker content and have it really easy to access all in one place. So it's right there. To create a new report opens up here. The other thing is that what analysts have really loved about some of their older uh, dashboarding tools is the ability to not only connect to governed data, but to connect to ad hoc data sources as well. So one of the things that Studio brings is a whole host of hundreds of connectors for you to be able to query your data, uh, query your data directly um, as well as connect to Looker models for governed data access as well. So go back here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an example here looking at our Looker model, an easy filter. Um, I love that I can get a quick look so I can see what's behind the model as well and some of the metadata to really understand the types of questions that I could potentially ask. Um, we also open up the hood even further so you can get down to the LookML level. So really offering those different important panes of glass uh, depending on the type of user that you're, looking, that you're actually uh, pertaining to. All right, so we're going to go ahead and add this data. Which brings me to my dashboard canvas. It's going to automatically make sure that I don't start from an unfriendly blank page, and instead it's going to give me a chart to actually start with. Uh, this is a retail example, so you can see it picked some inventory ID and record count. When I select on the chart, it opens up this helpful properties pane uh, where, as Kate said, we're bringing in a number of different visualizations, um, both the ones that you're most familiar with, the go-tos, as well as a lot of the different visualizations that have been in demand uh, for your dashboarding needs, and they're all right there. You see the other panes that allow me to access my data, uh, and then all of my dimensions and measures broken out right, nice and neat so I can tell my dates and my geo fields from it, so it's really easy. So in this case, let's just grab uh, my year and month. I can drag it onto the dashboard. You also see that we're starting to augment the way that our charts and visualizations look uh, to really make sure that they are 2024 appropriate um, for what you're looking. And one of my favorite things about the Dashboard Studio is the ability for me to also upload rich imagery like stock images as well. Um, I can embed rich media like YouTube videos and other things like that to really make my dashboards come to life and make them really, really collaborative and sharing. This is an example about kind of the art of the possible that you can build with Studio today. Everything from a tab format for you to have different pages for me to be able to organize my data and information. Super easy, drag and drop to build interactive controls to filter, uh, format the dates. Uh, and of course, if you can see, uh, everything is interactive where if I click on a state, the cross filters are really powerful so you can get there just to the right view. And when I hover over, um, it's going to give me another view to get down to my explore mode as well. So I can even have another way that I can focus in and make sure that I get the visualization. This is one of our Looker customers' favorite features, and we're excited to kind of bring this experience together. All right. 
I will hand it back over to Kate now to talk to us a little bit about where we're going with APIs, extensibility, as well as workspace as well. Thank you, Sean. All right. Well, it wouldn't be a Looker session without talking about how incredibly extensible Looker is. And because it's an area that we're very proud of, we wanted to highlight a couple of the innovations of what we've been working on and that have recently come into the Looker world. I'm gonna talk about two different themes. I'm gonna talk about bringing data to people where they work, and I'm also gonna show you an, some examples of the kinds of things you can do together with Looker and Vertex AI. Let's start with our users. Where do our users spend all our time? I heard the applause at the keynote this morning about some of the workspace uh, you know, in, enhancements, and that's because we know that our users are spending all their time in Gmail, in Sheets, in Chat, in Slides. And so I'm very happy to tell you that Looker is now fully integrated with Google Workspace. As part of this, you can schedule alerts to Gmail and to chat to stay up to date on what's going on in your business, or you can export your reports to slides to tell your story in a business meeting, and you can just, your, your users can collaborate around data in a more natural way where they're working. We've also recently launched a new Looker block specifically for Workspace to help you, our workspace admins understand how Looker is being used, or sorry, how workspace is being used in their organization using Looker as the means to help them. And I thought I would show you one of my favorite new things that is coming out shortly that gives you, shows you the power of how users can work with data in their natural environment. And that is our one-click experience to create a studio dashboard from a sheet. Now, if you think about this, we so often are sending around spreadsheets of data, but it's not always easy to tell what you're looking at when you get that sheet. Wouldn't it be great if instead, along with that sheet, you could also sell, tell somebody a story more visually that they can maybe more quickly understand? With our new one-click experience, you can go from a sheet of data to a studio report, and we're automatically gonna create those visualizations for you. And of course, this just gets you started. Right? You can continue to tell the story the way you need to. But what I love about this, too, is that it really simplifies the configuration of connecting these two things together, because now you have a studio dashboard that's live connected back to the sheet. And so as the data on the sheet changes, your dashboard is going to be continually up to date. And you didn't have to do anything to make that happen. It was just a single click. Just one example of the kind of things that we're doing to bring Looker and Workspace closer together and to help your users work with data where they're already working. So now let's switch gears a little bit from the very easy to the powerful and talk about Looker and Vertex AI together. Now because of the semantic model and the APIs of Looker, it creates a great foundation for data experiences that can be richly infused with AI. And so what we've done is we've created a couple of open source solution examples to give you the idea of what you can do in your own Looker applications. Our Explore Assistant helps you see how you can bring natural language queries directly into your own Explore, inside your own application. Our Dashboard Summary extension helps make any dashboard actionable by automating summaries that are created in real time and giving you next recommended actions. And these are just two examples of the kinds of things that you can do together with Vertex AI and with Looker. And of course, this is only available and possible because of the extensibility of Looker's platform and the fact that you've made these investments in our semantic model and that that allows you to trust these automated insights that are coming out of Vertex AI and these amazing conversational experiences. Now, we have a lot more to talk about around bringing you from BI to AI, and I'm gonna hand you over to our next presenter, my illustrious colleague, Peter Bayless, the VP of Engineering for Looker. Peter? Thanks, Kate. I'm excited to talk a little bit about what we're doing in terms of Gemini in Looker, and specifically, what we're doing in Gen AI in BI. So, Google has a long history of innovation in AI, uh, many significant milestones. And, you know, from, we, from inventing the transformer model, the transformer architecture that really has unlocked this latest phase of AI innovation with Gen AI, all the way to the Gemini family of models today. 
And what I want to do is talk a little bit about how we're seeing Gen AI and Gemini really disrupt the way that analytics is done and will be done in the future. So specifically, in traditional BI, the process of getting a question answered is often very linear. Question is asked, we find the right data, many steps proceed, we come up with an answer, and it's often very manual. And as a result, BI has a limited impact relative to what it could have, we think about the true mission of business intelligence inside of most organizations. And where Gen AI comes in and why we're so excited about this, it has the opportunity to really dramatically expand the impact of BI by being much more iterative and multi-directional, letting different personas jump in at different stages of this value creation chain and really automate many of these painful and manual processes, making them much more efficient from finding the right data, asking the right question, and creating the right report. And most importantly, with Gen AI, we have the opportunity to make BI much more accessible, to tailor the results and the outputs to specific users, to personalize them, and gather all available context in our organizations to give the best possible answer. We're realizing this opportunity and this vision with Gemini. So Gemini as a whole is really Google's intelligent and assistive set of capabilities that's coming to each and every one of our Google products with consistent experiences and quality. And our goal of Gemini and Looker is to deliver a helpful assistant for accelerating analytics tasks and workflows using all of that context, especially the looker semantic layer to drive trust and quality. Today we have some very exciting announcements about Gemini and Looker. First, we're announcing the preview of a range of Gemini capabilities, making analytics tasks all the way from LookML model definition and formula editing, all the way to things like slide generation, report generation, available in preview. We're also announcing a new capability called conversational analytics. And I want to spend a fair bit of time digging into conversational analytics. We think this is truly the realization of Gen AI's potential for the analytics value chain. So conversational analytics at its core is a new chat-based experience for data analytics. It's designed to be collaborative and composable across the analytics workflow. What this means for users is that conversational analytics bridges the gap between human language and the process of technical data analysis. Put a different way, business users can type in natural language and receive answers back or in visualizations. Well, power users can go and get code and SQL and look ML back as well. And because this is a composable platform with open API, this enables possibilities for custom data experiences that are far beyond traditional BI. Let's talk about the conversational aspect of, of conversational analytics. At its core, conversational analytics is a notebook-like experience designed to be very familiar for collaboration and sharing and really make it accessible for a wide range of users in your organization. It's conversational and that's multi-turn. This means that I can get an answer and I can ask follow-up questions. I can refine the answer. I can go and understand how and why this answer was created. And because this is built in Looker, we're not only able to explain why a given answer uh, was produced, but also where that answer came from, how a metric like revenue is defined, and who defined that metric, and when it was last updated. We can leverage LookML and the Looker semantic layer to ensure rigorous quality of answers, and trust. Now, conversational analytics is also designed to be collaborative. So if traditionally data analysis has been this linear flow, largely siloed between uh, stakeholders and BI and analytics, Gemini changes this by really leaning hard into collaboration, just like Google Workspace does for documents and presentations. So the conversational analytics interface allows users to share insights and ask questions and co-author data stories all within Looker. This lets teams get to the same answers and get on the same page faster and make these data-driven decisions with confidence together. I also mentioned that conversational analysts is composable. We are offering conversational analysts with flexible APIs 
that allow customized experiences and embedding and different types of experiences embedded in other um, data platforms and products where your users are doing their work, all within the governed data platform of Looker. And this is consistent with, from, from, with the Looker architecture. So as a platform, we have always taken open philosophy around Looker uh, to provide APIs for data access and making sure that data is available where people are doing their work. With Gemini and Looker, we're supercharging the existing investments in semantic model and the base Looker platform by enabling easy access and integration to true best in breed Gen AI experiences and capabilities like the conversational, uh, like the conversational experiences we just talked about. So in summary, there's a lot to be excited about, both in terms of our vision for Gen AI for BI and also what's available in preview today. We truly think that we can yet again redefine BI in this AI era by taking an approach that's conversational to broaden the impact of BI, that's collaborative to break down silos across personas, and it's composable, so you can put these types of capabilities wherever your users do their data work. And the winning combination is an awesome semantic layer with awesome foundation models to deliver higher quality and greater impact for you and your organization. Now I'd like to welcome Sean back to show us what Gemini and Looker is truly capable of. Take it away, Sean. All right. All right. We're going to do this live. We're going to show you a, a kind of a walk through a range of the different Gemini and Looker capabilities, uh, starting with LookML. One of the great use cases that we hear today is that we love LookML and the power of it. How do we make it easier to get started? How do we make it easier to generate that trusted code um, so we can get this into production faster? All right. So here I have my LookML model. I'm just using a simple retail set today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use LookML Assist to actually start out, because what do you do first when you have a LookML model? You need to configure it and maybe create some new measures. Uh, so I actually, I, nobody wants to see me do a typing test, so I'm actually just going to go ahead and just, I have two prompts that I've put here. And I'll zoom in so you can really see what they are. Essentially, I want two prompts that are actually going to then create uh, quantity and then I, the items per order, and I want to see the average selling price. So I'll zoom out. And right there, you can see that my LookML code is right there, and it's good to go. So I want to add this to my view. So I'm going to go ahead and insert that. I'm going to save those changes. OK. Code generation for LookML, make that faster. How do we use natural language to create LookML code faster? That's great. But we all know that data modeling use cases are a little bit more complicated. So we've also been able to advance uh, our LookML Assist to be able to handle more complex use cases. So for example, we want to actually create a new derived table. This is pretty common workflow in Looker today. So how are we going to do that? So I've already pre-created a view here. You can see it's empty, nothing up my sleeve. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy the prompt that I have here. Not there. All right, I have my backup clipboard here. I always come prepared. All right, so you can see it says create a drive table, uh, and I've given it some information. So I've been able to print my prompt, give it a few seconds, and Gemini is going to create the code that I need right here. So here's my top 10 customers. I can go ahead and insert that into my model. I'm going to go ahead and click Save. But I have one more thing to do before I can make all this come to life. We've created a couple of measures. We've created a derived table. But we're trying to empower our end users, so we need to create an explore as well. Well, what if I don't know how to do that? Well, there's a prompt for that. So I'm going to go in here and again, go back to my trusty LookML assistant, create an explore, call it top 10 customers. And it's going to go ahead and generate the simple LookML code that I need. There it is. Insert. Change. The code is pre-validated, so I know that I can move very, very quickly. There it is. All right. So now 
uh, I'm going to go back into one of Looker customers' favorite features about the platform, which is Explore. It makes it really easy for me to visualize and prototype visualizations of my LookML model. All right, so we started with two measures, which was our items per order, average selling price. And so here I'm just going to look up. Let's just look at this by customer name. And here's our measures. We've got average selling price. Go ahead and run that. The magic moment, there's my data. So there's, there is. I went from building the new measures to now being able to consume that and explore as well. So remember, we also created a new derived table. So what does that look like? Here's my top 10 customers. We'll open up that. Remember, we just used a simple prompt, create a derived table, and I gave it some information. Now I'm just going to say it's actually already gotten this all ready to go, and I'll just make this come to life uh, in explore mode just so. So LookML Assistant, rapidly deploy data modeling code with LookML so you can be able to push these uh, use cases into production fast. It's great if you're an experienced LookML coder. It's great. We're going to speed up these workflows, make it even faster. If you're new to LookML, it's going to make it easier and faster to learn as well. So how do we really make sure that we accelerate that learning curve of learning LookML? So really powerful stuff. You have to clap for each demo, though. They don't, they don't work. <laughs> so I showed you Explore Mode. And Kate touched upon like, what makes Look really special is its extensibility and its composability. So you saw that I was kind of selecting my dimensions and measures on my Explore kind of one by one. Well, with Looker plus Vertex AI, I can actually customize my entire Explore experience uh, and actually build my own conversational agent, which is actually pretty cool. So I could ask something like, well, let's start with a high-minded uh, question like, who are our most loyal customers? And so what this is going to do is it's actually going to have the LLM. Um, it's going to actually hit the LookML model that I have here. And Explore is going to show me there's the data. And you can actually see, if I open up this, it's how it actually selected the different dimensions and measures that I have. And I can kind of keep going with this. You know, I can ask questions like, um, you know, what is the seasonality of our business? This is great for me being able to make it really fast for you to be able to generate visualizations um, in Explore. So there you go. And you can even, you know, so only for 2023. This is also multi-turn supported. This is an open source extension. You can get this started today. The power of Vertex also gives you that optionality uh, to be able to be grounded in not only a semantic model, but it allows you to actually then uh, be able to bring your own LLM as well and have really have that choice that you need. Um, and this I can just show you just for fun, being able to have different things that I can program. So Kate talked about dashboard summaries, have that in context in a feed. Great way to supercharge Explore, one of our favorite features, and taking it even further. So here you go. There's our little summary here. And away we go. So we also talked about conversational assistant, um, or conversational analytics. So not, a dashboard is a great starting point, but it doesn't answer all the questions. You have this infinite long tail of questions that a dashboard can't answer. And so we're making it really easy to ask a question and get answers from your data very quickly. So what are our most popular products? Or how about hottest products this year? Being able to handle the ambiguity of the language is really key with a lot of these, pro with a lot of these products. And we, there's, with where we're going with conversational analytics, there's no black box. And so we're always offering the query details along the way so you can trust the data that's coming back at you. Um, and I can continue to have this conversation in a multi-turn fashion. So maybe I want to understand my sales distribution by market. And again, you're going to see how it almost like, takes the ambiguity of the natural language serves up a best fit visualization in just a few seconds. And I can really keep going. Say, show me monthly sales compared to last year. You can even get even a little bit more complicated with asking comparative questions 
um, as well. So there you go. And maybe finally, I will end my routine with maybe asking, um, you know, how has monthly sales changed oh, by category? So you can see it keeps the context of my question. It allows me to keep building on it and serves me up a best fit visualization. And again, the details on query transparency are so important. So I can always be able to see exactly how the answer is coming back at me. I can also open this in Looker Studio as well if I need a bigger canvas. This is where I talked about Google Easy Dashboarding. This is allowing me to say I can go for a conversational um, analytics into a dashboard that allows me the full flexibility um, to really move things around. Um, so I can drag and drop. Um, I can you know, be able to just simply build just a couple of things to make this example a little bit more interesting. So I've got my product name. Look at this by quantity, maybe sales. If I got my chart, I can easily select this. We do a heat map chart. And maybe we look at our product categories broken down by size. Again, it's just really easy for me to drag and drop this and say we'll just end this on. And there's my sales metric. And I want my stacked bar chart. One of my favorite features also is, again, styling is so important when it comes to building reports and dashboards that people will actually want to engage with. So here's my handy Gemini logo. So I bring this in. I right click, I can extract the theme intelligently from it. There you go. They're, all my themes are, are nice and neat right on the dashboard. And of course, collaboration is at the heart. Um, it's really easy to share Studio dashboards. But of course, in Gemini, what I can also do is I can generate automatically a slide presentation with generated uh, narratives as well. So in this case, I'm just going to choose all visualizations. It's going to retain my branding as well. Uh, this is an, it will retain the title as well. I didn't kind of skipped over that part to give it a, a name, but here it is, a titled report. And you can see here's my slide deck, nice and neat. There's all my data, my generated narratives. This is a great starting point. We're getting such great feedback on this. So that's a full tour of some of the great capabilities that we have in Gemini and Looker. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I want to invite Kate Wright back up on stage, uh, who's going to share an awesome story about how one of our customers is really helping to bring this and more to life. Kate, back over to you. Thank you. A live demo with AI, and he passed his typing test. I'm very impressed. Now, I hope you saved your energy, because this is honestly the best part of the presentation, is hearing from you know, the most trusted source possible, a Looker customer. Over the last year, I've had the chance of getting to know our next presenter really well, and he's been incredibly helpful, the entire team has really, on influencing our product strategy around Looker. And so I'd love to welcome to the stage the head of analytics and data visualiza visualization at L'Oreal, Mathieu Burel. <laughs> you? I can. First of all, thank you so much for the invitation. I'm sorry in, the, in advance, I forgot my cloud shoes. OK. So my name is Mathieu Burel. I'm head of analytics and data visualization at L'Oreal. And I'm really pleased to be with you today to share our passion, not only for beauty, but also for tech. And you know, at L'Oreal, of course, you may wonder why why we are here at Google Next Las Vegas talking about beauty. You know, at L'Oreal, we strongly believe that tech can push the boundaries of what's possible to improve the life of our customer and, um, and also to cater the infinite diversity of beauty needs and aspiration. But I'm pretty sure that it's not a surprise for those who follow the keynote of our L'Oreal CEO, Nicolas Hieronymus, during the last CES here, again, at Las Vegas. And if today, if today at L'Oreal, we are the first beauty company in the world, if today at L'Oreal, we are the first beauty tech and the leader, it's because we never stop innovating. 
At L'Oréal, we use to promise beauty for all, and thanks to tech, we want to offer beauty for each. Beauty is an essential human need, and for more than a century, our sole dedication. At L'Oréal, we have always seen technology as a driving force to embrace beauty's infinite diversity. We are entering a new era where ultra-personalization is the new aspiration, where beauty for each is powered by Beauty Tech. Beauty Tech is essential to know consumers intimately. By connecting 115 years of unique expertise and data, we understand consumers' needs like never before. Beauty Tech is essential to astonish consumers with trailblazing innovations. By combining advanced science with game-changing technologies, we open new possibilities for unequaled beauty innovations. Beauty Tech is essential to empower consumers with elevated beauty experiences. By imagining services that guide, diagnose, predict, treat, and coach, we build lifelong value for consumers. Beauty Tech is essential to augment beauty consumers' journeys. By harnessing the power of tech, data, AI, and generative AI, we create new codes of beauty and new relationships between our brands and consumers. Beauty for each, powered by Beauty Tech. Well, and today, after uh, a century dedicated to the beauty at L'Oréal, we are proud. We are proud to have the world richest database considering all aspects of the beauty, the beauty tech data platform, connecting with our customer across the 37 international brands, supporting all kinds of needs from science to AI through BI and those thanks to an amazing network of 8,000 tech data and, of course, digital experts. And you know what, Kate? We energize our beauty tech data platform with, of course, Google Cloud, with at the heart of the beauty tech BigQuery, Looker for Analytics, and now Gemini. It's, uh, it's fantastic to see what you've been doing at L'Oreal. Will you tell the audience a little bit more about your analytics strategy? Well, at, at L'Oreal, uh, yeah. Tell, it, tell me about it, and I'll make sure they're showing some of your great work. Well, at L'Oreal, we, we embrace a philosophy, simplicity over complexity, meaning that we want to unleash the data. We want to, well, let users consume insights, and those, making it easily accessible and making it easily understandable at each level of the organization. We want to let them conduct their own analysis at the speed of the thoughts. Well, to uh, answer to business question, um, leveraging visualization and data storage they leave, or to build and design their own report without needing deep technical expertise. And our role as an IT is to provide the best analytics platform, scalable, governable, secure, of course, performant, and intuitive. And at L'Oréal, it just represents 35,000 active users consuming data from the data, uh, beauty tech data platform, that is to say 100 petabytes of data. Well, that certainly sounds like an impressive uh, responsibility. Um, I'd love to just get a sense of, you know, you've, you've been part of the journey with Looker for the last year. Uh, you know, you've, you've certainly thrown uh, some really good feedback our way. We've had some fairly challenging and positive conversations. I'd love to get a sense for you these days. How are you feeling about the future of BI at Google? <laughs> <laughs> I'm super, super, super excited. You know, it's, well, from my point of view, it's not an easy job to merge two complementary tools, yet comparing and you did it. Uh, Google has made its own mark, uh, bringing, uh, the, uh, well, bringing the life to an enhanced BI, well, not BI, augmented analytics platform, of course. Um, and well, that's from my point of view, a game changer. It happened at the perfect moment with the advent of Gen AI and AI, putting 
Google and of course Locker at the forefront of innovative analytics. It is actually fairly incredible timing. And if you maybe I'll ask you one last question, if I may, about you know how does AI fit into how you're thinking about this these days, right? Thinking about what you're doing at L'Oreal, thinking about Looker and, and the overall Google Cloud investments you're making. And <laughs> what can I say? Oh, there's so much thing to say and to share. Um, well, there is one. There is probably three key key areas from my point of view that make Looker unique. Mm. Okay, of course, the semantic layer to consolidate and um, centralize the way to interpret and consume uh, data. Well, not just data dimension, matrix, yeah. hierarchy. Um, the best of breed platform, I said, augmented analytics, BigQuery, Looker, Vertex AI, and Gemini. And last but not least, the well-known Google robust infrastructure that are able to support us uh, in, our, in a certain way, in our crazy journey. We think big, we start small, we, but I can promise you, we move so fast. <laughs> With your huge amounts of data and your many users. Well, I, I would like to, first of all, thank you so much for thank joining so me much. on stage. I would love to ask the rest of our presenters to join us um, because we're basically at the end of everything we'd like to share with you today. Um, and so a couple of calls to action. Um, if you want to continue learning about Looker while you're here, we have some fantastic other sessions. We have a session dedicated to Looker in Workspace. We have a session dedicated to embedded analytics and one specifically on conversational analytics. There's a ton to learn and you can even get hands on the product by building custom AI powered data apps with Looker and Vertex AI together. So encourage you, if you haven't yet, go check out our hands-on lab. And of course, send us your feedback. And I'd like to, again, thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, a special thank you to Mathieu for coming all the way over here and joining us on stage and all my presenters.